lift your hands everywhere. Just lift your hands to Him. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Open your mouth. Adore Him. Magnify His name. Give Him praise. Just worship Him and throne Him in your heart. And throne Him with your praise. And throne Him with the lifting of your hands. from verse 1 Psalms 48 from verse 1 it says great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God it's not just to be praised it's greatly to be praised where in the city for we have come to Mount Zion the city of the living God so the worship and the praise of our God is best done by his people in his house now in just two minutes while they play I want you to lift your voice in the posture and the mode of worship and just exalt the name of Jesus and magnify him from the depth of your heart let him be enthroned with the words of your mouth let him be enthroned with your praise Lift your voice and render worship to him all over this place and online. Magnify his name, praise him. Bless him in the spirit if you can. Bless him in your own words. Bless him in your understanding. Just magnify his name. What a mighty God we serve. What a great God we serve. You who are enthroned in the midst of the cherubims. He that walks upon the wings of the wind. He that makes the cloud his chariots. He that clothes himself with light. He who is called the father of light in whom there is no darkness, there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. Come and open your mouth. Bless the name of Jesus. Give him praise. Give him praise. Come and open your mouth and give him praise, adore him, exalt him in this room. Shira Mahatra Pragati Libu Kuruzo Boroda Maha Ambrahati Sopro Kodose Prahada Gala Semereketubata Mahade Kedai Andala Bahabra Sika Prada Lahai. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Anna Barakasi Abakada Dia. Ela Mashanda Barakata Barakosia. Empress Kabarakotose Balahai. There is none like you, Father. You are highly lifted. 
shadow and your glory fills this temple you are highly lifted up and your glory fills this place you are holy lord you are holy. just lift your hands to him you are holy Lord, you are holy. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. Say, you are holy. Lift your hands, I feel the presence of the Lord here. You are holy, Lord, you are holy. Sing it one more time. You are holy, Lord, you are holy. Lord, we give you praise tonight. We bless you. We adore you. We thank you for your presence in this place. You are truly highly exalted above every name. And we acknowledge you tonight for what you will do in our lives. Take the glory and the praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to pray for two minutes before you sit down. The Bible says the entrance of your word give it light i want you to cry to him in two minutes and ask for an encounter with the light of his word the bible says it is that light that shines in darkness and darkness does not comprehend it the darkness of ignorance the darkness of delay the darkness of confusion the darkness of mediocrity Whatever that represents darkness in your life, the, in your life, the light of God will outshine it and bring you to a new place in glory. Can you raise your voice and say, Lord, give me an encounter with the light and the transforming power of your word in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Forget about who is around you. Raise your voice and pray. Come on, open your mouth and contend for that light. That life that is revealed by the power of his word. I can't hear you. Lift your voice. Talk to him. Parashuprahata babres kebeleto rahasa prate reba sahata brande prohosuta bahaskiba mamba lahasa brande prohosku paradia hasanai zebrondo presebelo do bonde pregedidas jibrahata labara hasi paradai jido prohosu to robokosi adaba. Shibrahata, come on, raise your voice and pray. You made all things. 
things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward. For you make all things new, yes, you make all things new. Please pray for just one minute. Suprahate Barahadosia, I refuse distractions. Tonight is my night to break free from obscurity. To come out of lack, to come out of mediocrity, to come out of the grip and the control of everything that has exalted itself above my life and above the knowledge and the grace of God. Thank you, In Jesus' name we pray. I can't hear you. Father, visit us and transform us by the indomitable power of your word. Let the captives be set free tonight. Let the light that shone in creation shine in our hearts tonight. Let your people experience another dimension of your glory. In your name be glorified tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I can't hear you. I said hallelujah. It's good to see everyone again. I want to welcome every one of us, whether you are following online or you are following or you are here tonight to Pneumatic. Pneumatic is an experience of the wisdom, the presence and the power of Jesus. And I trust that God himself will visit everyone and transform us in glory in jesus name amen and amen first of all let me apologize for being absent last sunday uh you know some other people will say i was with you in spirit amen so i was actually here in spirit but i had to leave because uh, i had an appointment with one of our fathers in the land and uh, when the father calls you you have to drop everything and respond amen and he said i should extend his greetings and his love to every one of us here and to say that he's happy with what god is doing in our midst amen and he's apostle jo- joshua selman amen Amen. So I believe that grace has been released. There's a shift for us now. Amen. And we thank the Lord for what He is doing and what He would yet do in our midst in Jesus' name. Please don't mind my voice. Even though I've not preached, I've been quite stressed within the week. And uh, but I believe that it will the voice will open up soon. Amen. And I want to thank uh, I want to thank Bishop for that uh, message here on Sunday. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. It was powerful. I was following online from the airport, and uh, was was really powerful. And I would like to say something about it before we go into the teaching tonight. 
please, you know, when it's time for the war, this is when the devil attacks the most to cause distraction. But believe me, you will hear something tonight that will shift you to another level entirely. You didn't make a mistake to be here. But just to buttress on what he was sharing on last week, uh, which I believe is one of the things that we need to hold on to in this season. Uh, it is important that we learn and cultivate the habit on wait, of waiting on the promises of God. I was talking to somebody recently and I told the person that the highest honor that a man can receive in this life is not the honor of being a foremost politician or a government official. It's not even the honor of being a Nobel laureate, you know, prize winner. It's not the honor that any human sphere in society can give to you. The highest honor that a man can receive is the honor of waiting on God. And I think that we need to teach again what waiting on God is all about. Because in the last days, it is those that are able to wait on the Lord that will not only mount up with wings as eagles, but will earn a favorable spot in God's end time agenda, in God's end time will, and in God's end time plan. The Bible says in Isaiah 64 verse 4 that God acts on behalf of those that wait for him. God acts. And so sometimes, you know, when we go through life, it is important. I know that God, by reason of the prophetic or by reason of divine encounters, can give you a revelation of his intention for your life, his purpose for your life. Or a prophetic word can come to you that this is what is about to happen. And most times when God releases prophecy over a person, God speaks as though it is already done. And that's not a lie because from God's realm, it is done. The only problem is that heaven is the only place, heaven is the only realm in the universe where finished realities exist. Very important. And the Bible says in heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. And so the Bible says in Psalms 119 verse 89, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled where? In heaven. That's it. So when God is speaking to you, He's only trying to help you for the sake of your human understanding. When He says, this will happen. He says, behold, I, do, I will do a new thing. He said, now it shall spring forth. However, when it escapes from heaven and comes into time, it goes through process. And so there is the necessity of learning to wait on every promise, on every prophecy, on everything that God has said to you. The Bible says the promises of God, 2 Corinthians 1.20. In him I hear and amen. In other words, it is done. And you know, the word amen does not just mean yes. The word amen is the name of God. The Bible says so in Revelations chapter 3. He calls himself the, the faithful and the amen. So when God speaks to you, be rest assured that that word will come to pass. But there is a season of process. There is a season of waiting. And believers need to learn how to wait on the promises of God. We need to learn how to wait on the fulfillment of, of God's promises. It will not happen in your time. It will happen in its time. Jesus said to the disciples in Acts chapter 1 that it is not for you to know times and seasons that the Father has placed in His hand. He's the one that determines times and seasons. So sometimes God can give you a word and you may not know that the word will take the process of 10 years. So the question is why does God have to wait long for certain things to happen? That is why it is important to wait because it is in waiting that that question is answered. Not every delay is of God, actually. Some delays are caused by the enemy. Some delays are caused by the unprepared state of the human being. Because that word that, came, that is coming to you, is coming, is traveling from another realm. Are you, are you with me here? 
is traveling from another realm from another energy level to your level so for you to manifest that word you will your life will need to generate the same energy level that is contained in the realm that that word came from to you so most times god will speak to you and say you are an apostle to nations but not this version of you there are upgrades that will need to happen to you there are processes of transformation that you will need to go through then you will need, willingly need to subject yourself to read because just because you are god's child does not mean god will break or compromise his principles for you are we together so it is in waiting and in intimacy with the holy spirit that you begin to understand why there are certain delays happening it is the holy spirit that will help you that will give you the intuition to know if this issue is caused by the devil or it is by my own prepared state sometimes the word comes to test your resilience sometimes the word comes to test how strong your conviction is paul said but i know whom i have believed and i'm persuaded that he is able to keep that that's conviction but can i tell you something every conviction will be tested so the reason for the process so the reason for the delay i was i was talking to somebody recently that you had a conviction about a relationship before entering the relationship does not mean that relationship will stand or last no what will happen is that now that you feel you have a conviction there are situations that will occur in that relationship that will test the depth and the validity of your conviction did you hear what i said uh -huh. so oftentimes you'll find the two of them after two years they break up and say no this is not of god yet he will tell you that he had a conviction from the beginning why was jesus tested remember he came out of jordan river jordan the spirit of god came on him and from there the same spirit that came on him drove him to the wilderness the bible says to be tempted by the devil it was god that deliberately subjected him to a test now what was the temptation when when the devil came so you know why you know what his conviction was he said if you are the son of god command these stones to be made bread meanwhile what did they what happened at the river jordan when he came out from river jordan the bible says the spirit of god descended on him and a voice spoke from heaven this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased so that was a conviction he received that needed to be tested if you are the son of god and that's the reason why you know the pop, there's a popular adage that says when the going gets tough it is the tough that gets going so god gives you a vision for a great ministry and after two years it looks like it's not going to go anywhere you started with 10 people in your music group three years later there are only three people remaining and two don't come for rehearsals don't worry it's a process even the people don't know that that was a season of test for god to weed out those that are not serious to partner with him for something that is an eternal destiny so don't cry when people leave you in fact there are people if they don't leave you there are certain encounters you may not have with god it was when jacob's wives and children and everything he had left him to the other side that the bible says that night he wrestled with god and there was a change reuben didn't see what happened that's why he went and slept with his father's wife simeon and levi didn't see what happened all the misbehaviors that the children of jacob did after that time they didn't see what happened they didn't know that this our father is not just a man anymore he said for as a prince thou has had power when you go through process and god has refined you sometimes some afflictions are even there to teach you wisdom the bible says he learned obedience through the things he suffered some satanic buffeting that god allows over your life for a period of time is there to teach you to groom you to school you some of you may never learn what spiritual warfare is if you don't go through a battle situation where it was like you will be swallowed up are you hearing what i'm saying if you go to any training institution you will discover that the environment of that institution is well simulated 
in a way to train and indoctrinate those that will, you know the students into conforming to the standards the rules the discipline of that institution so when somebody comes out of nda after five years it's not the person that entered there even if you have a degree in accounting the bank employ you they will employ the person who studied theater and performing arts they will employ the person who studied mathematics and they will do what take all of you for training so for some of us i'm just i'm just trying to you know put something on something on what he said so for some of us the process that we are going through god is refining us god is building us you have no idea of what is ahead of you it is easier to rise up than to stay up staying up is difficult i'm telling you you had an encounter with god and there's fire inside of you you quickly want to run and start ministry hold on wait stay 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 remember there are different kinds of spirits there are different kinds of demon the one that you casted out in your small prayer group that obeyed is not the same as the one that controls a territory And you know they say it's not the show for face spiritual authority not the show for face are you hearing what i'm telling you no i'm telling you no it doesn't so stay hold on to the promises of god indoctrinate yourself with it embrace it no matter what happens i came with a prophetic word for somebody the Bible says, For I reckon that the sufferings of now are not compared to the glory that will be revealed. You, are, you may have been going through the sufferings. You may have been going through the pain. For somebody in this service, you are about to step into that glory. Yeah. Just when you think that you are not enough, or when you think that you've lost everything, this is the time for you to step into the harvest. All the seeds that you have sown, all the fastings, the prayers, the perseverance, some of you, even in your consecration, it is time for your glory to open up. And in this season, let your destiny experience a shift to another dimension of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, please be seated. Hallelujah. Powerful message. Thank you so much for that, sir. Now let's go into the word of God for today. Are we ready? Are we set? The dominion mindset. The dominion mindset. This is not just a teaching. This is something that the Lord had impressed in my heart for a couple of months now. And it is the will of the Spirit of God that we get into it today today and enter into what god desires for us in this season the dominion mindset by the way let me also celebrate uh, reverend adi who is in the house with us from st stephen's military church you're welcome sir thank you very much and help me celebrate my covenant brother and friend minister david john thank you so much you're welcome sir good to see you good to see you i was telling him that he didn't change amen you're welcome sir please be seated so good to have you in meduguri uh, david john is an engineer with um, nnpc and i'm sure you are here on assignment you're welcome sir john chapter 3 verse 31 john chapter 3 verse 31 who comes from above is what above all he who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth he who comes from heaven is what above all verse 34 we'll come back to 31 but verse 34 for he whom god has sent speak the words of god for god does not give the spirit by measure now let me explain something in this scripture and then we'll get into the word briefly in verse 31 again verse 31 where we read verse 31 he who comes from above is up this is john the baptist speaking i believe 
this is john the baptist speaking and talking to his disciples and he was talking about jesus and this was the beginning this 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 was the season where jesus began his ministry when you read from verse 30 john brought an acknowledgement he said that he will increase that i would decrease because jesus had come to usher in a new age he had come to usher in a new dimension of the revelation of god to mankind beginning with the jewish nation and so john who was ordained by god himself to bear witness to the ministry of jesus began to talk to his disciples to give them insight about jesus christ and about the life that he came to express on earth and i find this verse 31 very interesting as it has to do with our topic tonight he say he who comes from above is above all and he who is of the earth is earthly so two things will happen to the man that is of the earth first of all the bible says he is earthly in other words his existence his life will be governed by the principles and the limitations of the earth because he is of the earth i've told you before that the source of a thing determines the sustenance so because this man comes from the earth or is aware that his life is governed by the principles of this earth he will be subject to the limitations of this earth his life will be a representation of something that is powered by the principles and the energy of this earth number two the bible says he also speaks of the earth that means that his speakings will be based on everything that the earth is all about his speakings will be limited by the principles of this earth his speakings will be about natural things his speakings and of course you know you need to understand to speak paul said when i was at a child i taught as a child i understood as a child and i spoke as a child so he, the reason why he will speak like someone of the earth is because his understanding is governed by the things of this life and if there are limitations in this life it means that everything he says and you must realize as a believer that it is your words that define who you are it is your words that creates your reality so the bible says he that is of the earth number one is earthly and number two he speaks of the earth so logic will control everything he says one plus one two plus two is what will control the mathematics of his life when you talk about divine provision he may not believe what you are saying because he believes that you have to work to get something to eat his idea of riches is that you must work hard the question is if hard work is what brings riches stone breakers are they not supposed to be the richest truck pushers are they not supposed to be the richest even teachers you've often heard them say that the teacher's reward is in heaven but they are the ones that dissipate more energy in in shaping and molding the minds of people society is 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 is, is at the mercy of two important agents number one the family number two teachers because everything about a man is governed and controlled by his thought patterns so a teacher is one that is responsible for shaping the mindset the thinking remember we are talking about mindset here that's what happens to the man that is of the earth he's limited by this life but the bible introduces to us in that verse another life it says he that is from above is above all and so that you don't mistake in which above because there are several aboves there are several dimensions the bible says the heaven of heavens there are i don't have time to enter into that there are heavens there are dimensions do you know that we have over 500 billion galaxies that god created 
and each of these 500 billion galaxies each has 200 million uh, um, solar systems our own is just one amongst that did you hear what i said if you don't understand go and watch discovery channel or, or study science so you now see when you take a request to god you now see the way god looks at you that's why he says ask of me and i will give you the nations you are asking for one bedroom two bedroom when god wants to give you the nations he say he that is from heaven is from heaven so that you will not confuse the above is talking about he say he that is from heaven is above all in other words the man that proceeds from the realm of god is the one that has dominion or that has been set above everything all the limitations that you have in this life all the limitation that exists in our spheres in our galaxies in our worlds the bible says this man maintains a superior life above these things another scripture first john oh i didn't talk about verse 34 okay go back to verse 34 of john chapter 3 let's finish that before we go to first john he said then for he whom god has sent the one that god has sent it is what is the one that is from heaven is the one that is from above do you understand now we have been redeemed and sent into this world are you hearing me so that we can bring heaven on earth for you to be sent it means you were called and the bible says that we are being called out of darkness into his marvelous light he said he has called us out of every kindred tribe and tongue revelations 5 9 and 10 and has made us unto our god kings and priests he has called us and he has sent us to bring the advancement of his kingdom on this realm that means that we are from heaven if you are born again this scripture john chapter 3 verse 34 belongs to you it says for he that is sent by god speaks the words of god and god gives his spirit without measure in other words when god sends a man first of all that man because he's sent of god he originates from god that man has the capacity to speak the words of god the words of god is not just quoting bible no the words of god is the ability to make communications that carry superior energies communications that transmit the very life and power of god communications that contain the very authority of god in other words that man can speak and it will stand just like god says for he whom god has sent speaks the words of god and the last time i checked jesus said the words i speak to you their spirit and their life that's why you see the end of that verse he say for god gives his spirit without measure so when god sends a man there is an increase from one level to another there is a constant refilling and increase in the measure of the spirit there is something called the supply of the spirit you see it is the spirit of god that quickens everything we do the word quicken means to give life to revive to empower everything we do as believers is empowered by the spirit the level you are the things the, 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 the demonstration of the supernatural power of god that is visible in your life is subject to the supply of the spirit that is on you at that time so there are results that you can get at that level for you to get results on a higher scale the supply must be increased for god gives his spirit without measure did you hear what i'm saying so it now it behoves of every believer to contend for superior outpourings of the spirit of god that's the reason why though they received the, the the indwelling presence of the spirit of god once in john chapter 20 when jesus breathed on them yet when you read the book of acts 
the outpouring of the spirit on them was from one phase after another in acts chapter 2 the bible says they were filled with the spirit and they spoke as the spirit gave utterance in acts chapter 4 in verse 29 and 30 the place shook while they were praying and they were filled with the spirit of god they didn't speak in tongues this time they spoke the word with boldness so for you to for you to demonstrate higher higher levels of results there are layers of the measure of the spirit that's why you, you are here every sunday so that it's not just to come and listen to word word alone no that's why it says that the word i speak to you they are spirit and life it's for you to tap into a higher measure of the spirit of god because the supply of the power of god and the workings around your life that demonstrate the hand of god in your life is based on how much access you have to the measure of the spirit of god if you are with me say amen first john chapter 4 i'm just trying to I'm, I'm showing you i'm trying to explain and we'll go into it in details what what it means to to walk in dominion because these are your dominion isn't it first john chapter 5 chapter 4 verse 4 to 6 He says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. In King James, he says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is. All right, go on. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. He said, We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. He said, by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So because we are born of God, the Bible says we have overcome. He said, for greater is he that is in us. Speaking of the spirit again. And interestingly, going down from verse 5 to 6 now. He says that those who are of the world, the world will hear them. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. The world will hear them. Men that are controlled by their natural life men that are controlled by the life that is in their blood will listen to them he said but for us it is he that knows god that will hear us and that's because what we speak is a substance that emanates from god first john 5 verse 4 for whatever is born of god overcomes the world in other words is superior is above and beyond demonstrates dominion above any kind of limitation that exists in the world say so for this is the victory of them that overcome even our faith the dominion mindset what is the dominion mindset the dominion mindset is the accurate and perfect understanding please be seated the accurate the dominion mindset is the accurate or perfect understanding of all the factors if you are writing that's the reason why i'm you know i'm slow so we can get it the dominion mindset is the accurate or perfect understanding of all the factors then in bracket you write in reconcilable proportions in reconcilable proportions understanding of all the factors in bracket in reconcilable proportions bracket open and close that are responsible that are responsible that are responsible for fulfilling the dominion mandate here on earth that are responsible for fulfilling the dominion mandate here on earth so let me read it out just so we can all get it together the dominion mindset is the accurate or perfect understanding of all the vac all the factors in bracket in irreconcilable proportions that are responsible for fulfilling the dominion mandate here on earth the dominion mindset is the accurate or perfect understanding there's such a realm as having that perfect understanding luke chapter 1 verse 3 tells us not just incomplete understanding 
but being able to fully comprehend that's what he says in Ephesians 3 in verse 16 you know down to 18 that we'll be able to fully comprehend with all the saints so to have a perfect or a full understanding of all the factors brought together at, at you know <laughs> the problem has always not been with the factors the problem has been with knowing and being aware of all the forces or the factors and then bringing them in in accurate proportions let me explain for instance if i ask you now if i give you the mic and i ask you how can a man enjoy kingdom prosperity one person may say tight and that's the end another person will say seed someone else will say ah you need to work hard do, do cryptocurrency or look for an NGO job another person will say forget about this seed and all, all these things are scam go and do business all these things are factors they are forces but they must be brought together do you hear what I say another example if I ask you how do I pray to secure deliverance? I know that you can pray. But how do I pray to secure deliverance? Oh, oh, let me say, if I ask, what is the key to securing deliverance from witchcraft? Somebody will say, pray. And it's true that you need to pray. But that alone is not the only factor. The problem we have in the kingdom is our lack of, or will I call it incomplete knowledge or ignorance of all the factors that are necessary to force a system in the kingdom to work in your favor just because you pray doesn't mean you secure deliverance no there is another thing you must add if you want to eat rice and stew and i pour raw rice in a plate and put it before you and then get stew and put it before you is that rice and stew yes but will you eat it no is it not rice and stew it's rice and stew But what you didn't understand is the rice has to be in a state something must happen to it and that's that's why in the last days god is restoring before we enter into that mighty revival there is a restore and there must be a restoration of truth 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 because the greatest weapon that satan has against us is ignorance where satan knows that you don't understand the full equation that can bring your deliverance out of this situation he has you under his manipulation for as long as that ignorance is sustained. This then means that the reason why we pray, the first or the primary reason why we pray, number one, is for the purpose of fellowship and intimacy so that we can lay hold on revelation that can command transformation in our lives. If you are aware with me, say amen so the dominion mindset is the accurate and perfect understanding of all the factors all 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 everything that is needed for you to walk in dominion everything that is needed for you to walk superior to the things of this life to truly live above and beyond as the scripture talks about that he that is from above is above all everything that is needed to bring that into a reality all the factors combined having the understanding of them which will now command the manifestation of the same that's what we call the dominion mindset all right let's define some terms let's define some terms first of all let's try to define or explain dominion if you are here say amen are you getting blessed all right Let's try to define dominion. Let's let's so we can have a base for our understanding. Dominion. Number one, it means to be in charge. To be in charge of or to rule over something. To be in charge of or to rule over something. To be in charge of. 
or to rule over something. Number two, it also means sovereignty or control. Sovereignty or control. In other words, total control. Total governance. Number three, it means the right to govern or rule or determine. It means the right to govern, to rule or to determine. The right exclusively to govern a sphere, to govern a people, to exercise authority over, to rule over them or to determine what happens, to determine the custom, the norms, to determine the state of things, the trend of things. That is what dominion is all about. That exclusive right to walk in this level of authority. Number two, did we get the definition of dominion? Number two, let's define mindset. 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 What is a mindset? Number one, the established set of attitudes. The established set of attitudes held by someone. The established set of attitudes. 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 In other words, behavioral patterns. settled in the mind of a person this is how the person behaves number two it is a habitual or characteristic a habitual or characteristic mental attitude a habitual or characteristic mental attitude a habitual or characteristic mental attitude that determines how you will interpret that determines how you will interpret and respond to life's situation just a moment let me go back again so we can we can get it completely a habitual or characteristic mental attitude that determines how you will interpret that determines how you will interpret and respond to life's situation. That determines how you will interpret and respond to life's situation. A habitual attitude, mental attitude. This is how you think. This is how you will interpret the things happening around you. This is how you respond to the situations of life. It is a habitual mental attitude. In other words, it is constant with you. You can't do anything more or less. Do you understand that? That's mindset. Number three, under mindset. A person's way of thinking. A person's way of thinking. And their opinions. A person's way of thinking. And their opinions. A person's way of thinking. And their opinions I think that's the simplest of all the definitions a person's way of thinking and their opinions so mindset is all about your thought pattern the way you think your opinion about life your opinion about people about relationships about events about situations your thinking the Bible says in Proverbs 23 verse 7, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That means that your life, your life is largely determined by your mindset. You cannot rise above your mindset. If there is a problem that demonstrates superiority above your thought pattern, you are under the limitation of that problem for as long 
as you hold on to that mindset your perspective about life how you see life some people see life as not fair and see themselves as victims of life some people see themselves as the one who should always receive from others that's why even when they have they still want to ask is that true very true some people always believe that they will never have enough so if they are raising money in church for anything it's minus them so they say i will serve god with my hand but when it comes to giving i no get see the people will get there is that true some people always feel offended when they see people drive their cars some other people have the opinion that every rich person will go to hell is that true minus me amen no so as far as they are concerned that opinion now makes them see material wealth in a light it makes them see it as evil and because of that somebody was explaining something to me about islam yesterday while i was coming back and you know and i just discovered with all due respect i just discovered the deception that is in some religion for instance that the person who it is believed there in that cycle that the person who treks to the mosque has more reward than the person that drives to the mosque is that true oh you don't know okay it's all right let me just explain those of you that know is that true yes and several other so that that now that is a it's 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 shaping a mindset in them so the poor in that religion feel that even in their poverty they are still recognized by allah they feel that in fact they are closer to their god because they are poor after all he who treks to the mosque and they will see no reason for why they should aspire to be great they will see no reason for why they should aspire to be influential aspire to be very wealthy in material possession why because of a mindset that being poor makes me close and they are held under that slavery nations are controlled by their mindset the mindsets of their leaders there are nations that believe in investing in human capital development one nation an example of one nation like that is singapore you know what we are doing now japa everybody's going overseas there was a time in singapore's history that it was a third world nation so many people were migrating out of the of the country but unlike our own the migration was planned a new president came in at that time his name was lee kuan yon so what he did was there was a they, 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 there was a network with all singaporeans that were overseas so what they studied there and every development on themselves was to come back and help develop their nation and that was what took singapore from being a third world nation to being a first world nation because their japa was with a mindset that i'm going to get more skills to come back and develop but here in nigeria why do we japa to go to the promised land isn't it no coming back every nation is controlled by the mindset of his individuals you forget about saying that they are bad politician every bad politician was once a bad child the reason why you have bad politicians is because you have bad people in society the reason why you have corrupt politicians is because you have corrupt people the corrupt people refuse to work and do something to earn a living so they wait for the peanuts that a corrupt politician will give them to go and snatch ballot box somebody said there are fake prophets everywhere it's because they are fake members yes the member does not want to grow he doesn't want to be responsible for his own life he wants the prophet to see everything for him to do every i'm, I'm bishop i'm tired honestly i'm tired of irresponsible christianity and i mean it i am tired
the Bible says we'll give ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer. But today, that's not the, 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 the issue in me. If I want to study, I have to keep my phone somewhere. Because everybody has one case or the other. Small headache is apostle. This one is apostle. You are going for an interview. Study and go for the interview. And God will crown your effort resources. No, apostle, wave your magic wand. I know you heard, I know you heard the you heard you heard the testimony of the lady. She wrote apostle. Don't try it though. Thank God for the miracle. All glory to God, but don't try it. Be your own, you may just get another thing. I'm tired. I am tired of irresponsible Christianity. I'm tired. Sometimes I have to switch off my phone for one day just to be so I'm, I don't lose my mind. Because of people that will not grow. Mindset, mindset, mindset. But today, God is confirming our mindsets. Another thing I want to define today is fear. It is important we define fear. Because the one force that will stop you, one of the strongest forces that will try to stop you from walking in dominion, is fear. Because fear also deals with the mind. What is fear? Number one, fear is an unpleasant emotion. An unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger. An unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain, or harm. An unpleasant emotion, in other words, an unpleasant feeling that is caused by the threat. It didn't say by danger itself, by the threat. Did you see that? By the threat, not by danger itself, oh, by the threat. Someone said that fear is false evidence appearing real. Just because somebody say you will see, all of a, all of a sudden the person is afraid. Anxiety steps in. Because he believes that was not an empty threat. Not, whether, even if nothing happens, he's already controlled by fear. And you know one thing? Fear is a force that attracts the reality of what you are afraid of. So anytime you are afraid of something, get ready. You will fall into it. It's coming. Job said, the thing I feared most. So the best way to stop it from coming is to come out of faith, of fear. Number two, fear is an anxious concern. An anxious concern formed from our anticipation an anxious concern formed from our anticipation or awareness of danger an anxious concern formed from our anticipation or awareness of danger anxiety because you are aware of danger Yet the Bible says that we are of God and we have overcome the world. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Faith is not denying the circumstances. It is ignoring it. It is ignoring it. We are not saying that there are no devils out there. There are. But the name of Jesus is much more real. Are you hearing me? The name of Jesus is more... The Bible says that God has given him a name that is above every other name that at the name jesus every knee so though we know that there are principalities and powers we know that there are spirit, spiritual wickedness in high places we know that there are rulers of the darkness of this world we know that witchcraft is real yet we know that there is a name higher than every name somebody is conjuring your name in the village and doing some things to try to hurt you we know that they are powerful but we also know that it is written that there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither any divination against Israel. So because you are a covenant child of the kingdom, you are a covenant son of God, that enchantment has no place in your life. He says, speak the word and it shall come to naught. Take counsel and it shall not stand. For the Lord is with us. 
So the next time somebody say you will see your reaction or your response to that is based on your mindset. And if you are ignorant of the provisions in scripture that make for your victory and to know that your victory was sealed before that person was born that person that the bible says that the lamb of god was slain from the foundations of the world revelation 13 that person that is saying you will see the one who died for your victory was alive even before him that person that said you will see he came from the one who is the beginning of all things the Bible says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And he didn't make anything or anyone to come and threaten you and see that their threat is carried out. No! But are you aware of that? Every believer should walk in the anointing. The only reason why you find men of God or pastors walk in it more is sometimes because of the, the, the awareness or the consciousness of their assignment and they know that what they do warrants that the anointing the power of god must must go to work at all times but truly every believer is anointed because what is the anointing the anointing is the holy spirit the spirit of god is upon me because the lord has anointed me it's a mandate for everybody I was, I, was, I was with a man of God and he was sharing a testimony recently. He said that season he had no car. He had sold all his car and everything. And then he, enter, he used to enter boats. I don't know if we have it here. Boat, Uber. Have you entered since you came? It's Napep we have here. Now that's a business waiting for somebody to explore and become a millionaire and use the money and support the gospel. But no, your car is only for you. When I, when I went to Abuja, I saw people using their car for boats. <laughs> boats. But here, yeah, we like comfort and love. It's the poor that like comfort more. Now, I'm not saying that. You understand? So he had to be entering boat and along, you know, taxi and all. And then one day he entered a one chance car. He didn't know it was one chance. When he entered, somebody entered and he was in the middle. <laughs> he said, what's happening here? Then they brought out their gun while the car was off, speeding. And they placed it on his head. They said, bring out your wallet, your phone, everything. Money and all. He said instantly, his consciousness was awakened. Something rose inside of him. And he turned to the person who pointed him gone. He said, ah, now everybody you will point gone to. He said, you they point me gone. Yeah, your mama, the hospital, sick. The guy looked at him. He said, even Joy, Joy, that's his, his girlfriend. He said, even Joy, no, no, say, now wait till they do be this. The driver said, who you be? Who you be? Eh, you want to tell us, say, you carry jazz. He said, ah, driver. He mentioned his state, mentioned his local government. He said, driver, everybody for this car will die today apart from me. You know why? He said, before you carry this car, enter this operation. See the drink where you drink. See how much you drink from that drink. See, they threw their gun and started begging. Today, two of them are in Dunamis headquarters. consciousness if it was somebody else that's why he wants to text apostle somebody say the dominion mindset huh. what will you do in the day of adversity because it will come if you were the one what would you have done because it will come You are in a chopper going to the local government and all of a sudden a miser passes the, the chopper and the force of the miser makes the chopper you know almost collapsing what will you do there it's because we don't there is a mindset we are yet to have and become conscious of it that is how the power of god comes to work oh. the degree of the power of god at work in your life is is, is proportional to the mindset you have created how conscious you are that greater is he that is in me one of our brothers here sent his tailor in abuja to come and see me you know take measurements and all and we just came back from somewhere and while the guy was taking measurements as soon as he touched me i had a vision and i saw a girl 
when we finish i sat down i say who is so so person he said that's his daughter i say ah what's her name i will call her princess he said hey that's her name princess i say yes in my mind i say that's just to tell you you came to a man of god no it was deliberate it was not no but you know some of us that have small stature it's very easy to for you to just walk past consciousness dominion mindset there are six elements of the dominion mindset six elements you will find these six things in every believer that operates consciously the mindset of dominion remember i told you dominion means to exact rule to govern to be in control of to determine a believer that is in charge that is in control a believer that is always above circumstances and situation that is not caught off guard there are six elements that you will find operating in his mindset number one a superior mentality of thinking a superior mentality of thinking i am not the victim i am the victor that's what it means a superior mentality he that is above he that is from above is above all i am from above therefore i am above all whether i am fasting or i am feasting is a reality are you hearing me some people are only conscious of who they are when they are fasting no i will eat chicken and still cast demons it's a reality the devil knows that i know that he knows that he's defeated and he's under my feet yes it's a reality wake me up anytime anywhere you find me it's a reality look at jesus for instance the bible says in luke he was entering a city with a crowd and out coming out of the city was a, a, a another crowd with a widow who just lost her only son that means she had no one else again that's a morning a morning crowd they were going to this they were mourning going to bury the dead and come back and mourn jesus was just entering the city he was not going for a crusade and the bible says he walked up to them and stopped the coffin he told you first of all he told the woman weep not weep not if it was another person he would say let's begin to charge the atmosphere let's pray in the spirit and charge the place for four hours there was no time for charging there are they see there are problems there are situations that will come in your life it is simulated every one of us will go through it the bible calls it the day of adversity no matter how you hide under apostle one day apostles number will be off it will be your turn and it's not because god wants to punish you it's because he wants to bring out the consciousness of who he is inside of you every one of us will go through it you better be ready you escaped it as a young man a bachelor your wife you get married the day your wife is giving birth and her life is under threat that's why i laugh when i see ladies who don't their first criteria for choosing the husband is not spirituality i laugh they call it god fearing are you kidding me god fearing are you kidding me till tomorrow i will preach it to the first criteria look for a man that knows god forget about looks nobody looks go save you when you day on top operation theater are you hearing me every one of us a superior mentality that's the first element of a dominion mindset it's not pride it's confidence of who you are consciousness that you are above when the bible says you are above even when the enemy comes in yet like a flood the spirit of god will raise his standard though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou not a spiritual father not a papa for thou art with me throughout last year there was never a time i called my spiritual father and asked for prayers throughout last year there was never a time how will i even get him he's, 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 he's three times more busy than i am he has to work there oh. when the thing happened i i know the, the solution is already there that's why god is quiet 
Uh, the next time you are in a problem, in a fix, and God is quiet, it's because the solution is already there. There are only two reasons why God is silent. Either because he has spoken already, or because he has empowered his vessel to walk in his stead. For I have said, ye are gods and children of the Most High. He said, but you will die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Why? In verse 5, they know not, neither do they understand. I'm not saying that you shouldn't call me again. But it's time for us to practice responsible Christianity. Number two, six elements of a dominion mindset. Responsibility. Responsibility. You find that operating. That's the opinion of the person. The zeal to always take responsibility. People who take responsibility don't complain. People who take responsibility don't murmur. They don't grumble. Caleb and Joshua spoke to them. Their own confession was different from the other ten. They say we are well able to go into this land and take it. He said, in fact, the land, they are afraid of us. Their defenses have departed from there. And they are giants he's talking about. It was their mindset. Responsibility. Responsibility. Moses cried up to God. God said, why are you crying to me? You act there. He said, tell the people to move forward. Raise your staff before the sea. It is in your responsibility that you see God's ability. Yes. The Bible says, with God. It didn't say to God. With God. I beg, help me on. What is with? With means combining two things together. So your, your faith, which is, which is demonstrated by your action, in compliance or in agreement with the power of God, all things are possible. With God, not to God. Responsibility. Number three. Reproduction. 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 You will find in that mindset the willingness to reproduce. These signs shall follow them that believe. He that believes in me, the work that I do, he shall do. And greater works than this. Reproduction. He always wants to do something. He wants his life to produce results that are worthy of the glory and the name of Jesus. He's ready to reproduce himself into others just the way God did in us. Number four, resilience. Re resilience. That is stamina. That is the willingness not to back down. That is perseverance. Do you know that perseverance outlasts the devil? The devil is afraid of resilient Christians. The next time you see the devil, tell him I said this. The devil is when the devil when the devil attacks a man, what he's looking for is to see if that man is a resilient believer. After two attacks, is the young lady going to just go and sit somewhere and cry? Or she's going to wear her priestly regalia and say, Okay, Satan, I was on my own. You came for a fight. I'm going to give you that fight. The Bible says Elijah told the king, he said, get thee up from hence, eat and drink, for I hear in my ears the sound. Yet he went to Mount Carmel. The Bible says he cast his head between his thighs. Seven times, he would have been discouraged at the third time. It's either the rain comes or the rain comes. Resilience. The willingness never to back down. Show me that Christian and I'll show you the one the devil is afraid of. They say everybody's running away from that place because there are witches there killing people. The man said, that's where we are going to. One of the mighty men of David, the Bible says a day came when the army of the Philistines attacked and the Israelites ran away. He stood, one man stood with a sword in the middle of the field. Say, we die here today. And he brought down an entire army. The others who ran only came back to collect the spoils. That's what is happening now. day. Nobody wants to press into God. Only a few will pay the price of alignment of desperation of waiting on god of pressing then the others will only come to want to tap and they don't even know how to tap they don't yeah it's true they don't know how to tap how do you tap from someone who carries the grace of god the alignment of honor 
it is either honor as a seed or honor as sacrifice or honor as service no other way papa please touch me nothing like that oh no no it is this earth that you can manipulate justice not the realm of the spirit the servant of god i went to see you think i went there empty-handed i've been planning to see him for the last 10 years i've been waiting for that day yeah i'll be waiting when i met him he, he said come 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 we were talking there were people in the room he said ask me anything what do you want ask me there's nothing to ask i've already seen grace my life must change i told him i said sir i have something for you that's all that's not the time to go and bring your family problem it's because you don't understand you don't have a revelation of the grace you are around when saul's father's donkey was missing they said there's a seer in this place go and meet him when he met somewhere somewhere said just by coming around my atmosphere the donkeys have been found that's the time you want to take your your family problem and this is not happening no 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 all i needed to do was see him that was enough the contact was there the rest my seed will handle it where were we it's your yes sir yes sir I think we should close here. Let's continue last week. Because there's no time. Humility. As a fifth element. Humility. Humility is not just being calm. No, there are a lot of calm people who are proud people. Humility is not being silent. There are a lot of silently ignorant people. Humility is power under control. Humility is humbled ability. In as much as he possesses a mindset of dominion, he knows that his dominion is determined by his alignment and submission to the government of God. So even when God invests power in you, you don't want to show. Can I tell you something? Be afraid of people who are anointed and don't show it. Be more afraid of them. The Bible says that the excellency of the power will be of God and not of us. That is the reason why we have this treasure in acting. The more frail the vessel, the more powerful and potent. Some of you don't even know how powerful what you have is, you have is inside you. Some of you are called into ministry and the grace that God is investing or will invest on your life is such that you will not need to conduct prayers of deliverance for people. You can step into a territory and principalities go. They just lose all the people they have tied and just leave. Because a man of power and authority has come. Some of you, that's what you carry. But God is working on your character and humility. Now you want to curse even the Napep man. You want to curse everybody. No. no. Humility. Somebody say humility. Humility. Especially if you will be a leader in the body of Christ. Whether in the marketplace or in the church place humility is very important god does not mind using 10 years to work on your character before investing the grace because if you have two cups one is clean with wine inside the other one is dirty with wine inside which one will you choose so that's what character does to the anointing character can preserve the anointing of a man and translate it as an inheritance to his children so the young man drinks with other people but he still sees visions you know why because his father walked with God I'm telling you some of you don't know why God is working on your consecration there are things God is asking you to do that is not seen God has said stop watching film and you watched last week because you got tired. What's the meaning of not watching? You don't know why God is preserving all of that humility. That's one of the elements of a dominion mindset. The last element is kingdom come mentality. Kingdom come mentality. Kingdom come mentality. He taught them to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come it is about his will it is about his government it is about his glory 
that your life is to portray and bring about the advancement of the kingdom so everything about you is kingdom come mentality it is not what it is in it for you it is what is it in it in you in, in it for the kingdom it is all about the kingdom so your finance you believe that it is for god first and his kingdom before my family so that to that kind of individual he can sacrifice his comfort to give god a place the bible says the ark of god was in the household of obededom and because of that god prospered obededom he rose and became the wealthiest man in that place one of the elements of the dominion mindset is kingdom come god will not just invest power in people for nothing no what is in it for him that's what your request does every time you are praying and asking god for something god weighs you and your understanding based on your request i heard the story of about baba diboye that shortly after you redeem was handed over to him i'm sure you 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 bear witness of this sir he was you know i think it was uh what's that place is it is it a uh, butte metal where yes and he was staying in a two bedroom or something like that you know as a rich university lecturer and he had to move into a very small house and all of that so he started praying to god give me a two bedroom so that my family can come and stay with me and god told him why are you asking for two bedroom when i can give you nations i will give you a city you are asking for two bedroom story had it that years later where you call redeem camp now on that lagos ibadan expressway i think there was a crusade or so and something you know god moved mightily through his servant and the king of that place came to him and say ask for anything that we can give you in this place and we'll give you he wanted to ask for a place to build the house that he had been asking god for god said don't talk go back i'll tell you what to say when he went back to god god told him go and ask the man for a city where the whole of lagos can come to he said god would they even have that he said go say when you are going go with some of your people just the way he spoke in the open when you go with crowd with with an entourage he will be forced that's how to relate with kings you remember herod the reason why he caught the head of john the baptist was not because he wanted to but because she made the request when he's eight and today you have redeem camp and i just discovered recently sir that that redeem camp they have something like that in america they have something like that in texas they have something like that in uk is that not madness do you know how big that place is a city it's a city no in nobody will give you that kind of land in america nobody uk is the worst a country that never wants you to be as wealthy as the queen and we are going there oh yes no you think i'm here shouting for nothing no before we started this god showed me nations this one is the Riyaz house kingdom come mentality those are the six elements the six elements now to understand dominion if you read genesis because that's where the mandate of dominion was spoken about if you read genesis chapter 1 in verse 26 and 28 that was where god expressed the dominion mandate he said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have dominion over the birds of the air the fishes of the sea the cattle on the earth and every creeping thing and the bible says in verse 28 that he blessed them the man he made and told them be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it and have dominion so that was where the dominion you know mandate came and i've told you before that in genesis 1 26 to 28 what you have there because you are seeing two creations of man in the book of genesis you have one in genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28 you have the second one in genesis chapter 2 in verse 7 in chapter 1 verse 26 
let us make man in verse 27 so god created man is that true it is image notice he didn't say and according to his likeness he didn't put likeness there and he made them male and female i don't have time to even talk about the word make the root word in in hebrews 1 26 so what you have in chapter 1 is the creation of purpose but in chapter 2 verse 7 and the lord god formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul that is formation of existence chapter 1 is creation of purpose this is my intention for this man yet we didn't see any man and god blessed them where were they nowhere to be found the reason was because it is recorded in chapter 1 verse 27 that the man created there was created according to his image not according to his likeness and the god that was speaking is spirit so this was the spiritual dimension of man this was where the creation of man's purpose was captured and then in chapter 2 the man now how he will exist on the earth is what god created that's why god had to take off the material of the earth to form man so that he can breathe into that man his purpose of dominion it is important we understand that because i want to introduce you to something now and then we will pray the bible says let us make man in our image and after our likeness two words there image and likeness somebody say image someone say likeness say it again image and say likeness those are two two things that must be understood the image of god is love first john 4 7 beloved let us love one another for god is what love but the likeness of god is creator the word likeness means this is how man will exist image means this is who man is and the likeness of god you find in genesis chapter one is the likeness of god as creator am i wasting your time is the likeness of the image of god is you know who man is or who god is transfused into man but the likeness of god you find in genesis 1 you find god demonstrated as creator and god said and god said and god said he was creating creating so when he said let us make man according to our likeness he was saying man should exist as a creator that's the reason why in chapter 1 of Genesis, everything that God created was finished. But in chapter 2, the Bible says, He kept man to till the ground. How? Where was the hole? Where was the rick? That is because He needed man to function as a creator. The hole and the rick, which are things coming from iron, they were deposited in the earth. God wanted man to think like him tap into the resources of the earth mine iron and convert it to become the implements that will be needed that is why it is only in heaven that finished realities are captured on earth nothing is finished god left the earth like that how can god say man should replenish the earth when he didn't create any transport system for man that was because he wanted man to function as creator think and walk with the, the things that have created and produce for yourself so every time man looks at a dog fowl you know dog fowl when a man looks at dog on the water what he should see is the is the image of a boat because if you look at the dog it looks like a boat remember i say have dominion over the sea god expects that every time man looks at the fish he should be thinking of submarine this is how you can create things that will move under the water even god hates irresponsibility i don't have time to talk about the birds of the air that's why you see aeroplanes are shaped like birds they have wings how can you say have replenished the earth 
multiply how will he do all this with what god wanted him to function in his likeness as creator and i told you one of the elements of the dominion mindset is what responsibility another one is what reproduct reproduction so when you ask God to bless you, God will bless you by opening your eyes to a problem or a need around. They had no food. Jesus said, look for food to give them. They said, there's no food here. Even if we buy 200 denarii worth of food, he can't feed these people. They said, but there's a young lad there with five loaves and two fishes. He said, but what will he do? Jesus said, that is it. Bring it. Because he said, be fruitful. Multiply. So the dominion mindset makes you task yourself so that you can begin to function in the likeness of God and then express the dominion mandate that God has given to man. The image of God speaks about being. You know, I, I, I spoke to you about two words, image and likeness. Image speaks about being. Likeness speaks about doing. Who you are versus what you are meant to do image speaks of life how you will live likeness speaks of principles image speaks of who you are likeness speaks of what you are meant to do image speaks of moral nature which is the nature of god likeness speaks about human capacity that must be developed image speaks about divine ability likeness speaks about divine functionality Are we ready to pray? Okay, let me say this and we'll round up. Let me give you the five forces that are responsible for working in dominion. Remember, we started with the mindset. Okay? And I told you that the mindset is having the understanding of the factors. Alright, so let me give you the factors now. The factors that are brought together for you to exhibit the dominion mandate on the earth. Let me give you those factors or those forces. Number one is what I call divinity. Divinity speaks about the revelation of God, the knowledge of God. For man to function in the likeness of God, he must first of all know who God is. He must have a revelation of God. It is interesting. Can I ask you a question? In Genesis chapter 1 in verse 3, on the first day of creation, God said, let there be light. But in verse 14, God created sunlight. He created moonlight. He created the stars, isn't it? So my question to every one of us, which light did God create in, chapter, in, in, in the first day? It's a question. Because your understanding of light is sunlight, or moonlight, or star. Which other one? Everything you understand about light was what was created on the fourth day. Yet on the first day, God began by saying, let there be light. Which light is that? Can I show you the light? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Does this look like creation? This looks like creation story, right? Good. Because darkness was upon the face of the deep. So when it came, he said, let there be light. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our heart to give the light of what? The knowledge. The light that was created on the first day of creation was knowledge. The knowledge of God. Apostle, what do you mean by the knowledge of God? The knowledge of God that makes you understand that He is the beginning of all things. In the beginning, God. So the first factor to experiencing or walking in dominion is divinity. Having a conscious understanding and knowledge of God. Otherwise, your life does not begin. You know the problem we have in America now? A five-year-old child does not know whether he's a girl or a boy. They say, LGBT, 
they now put Q. When I check the meaning of the Q, it says questioning. That means you are confused. You don't know whether you are a boy or a girl. You see what's happening in America now? All these transgender, all of these things they are putting, corrupt values. They are trying to take out the foundation, which is a knowledge of God. And you know what happens when that is introduced? Death is what happens. The day you eat of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what will happen? You will die. Is he talking about falling down to the ground? No. He was talking about isolation from God. You cannot walk in dominion if you don't start from the beginning of all things. God. A conscious knowledge. Jesus said in John 17 verse 3, This is internal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus whom you have sent. That's where it begins from. So a man that is void of the consciousness of the knowledge of the life of God, forget about dominion. Number two, forces that are responsible for exhibiting dominion. I said number one is divinity. Number two, discovery. The knowledge and the awareness of who you are. Number one is the knowledge of God. Number two is the knowledge of who you are. You discover who God is first before you discover yourself. It is like a mirror. When you look at it, you see yourself. You cannot know yourself until you know God. Can I tell you something? Purpose cannot be formulated. Methods can be formulated. Strategies can be formulated. Purpose is discovered. It's not ambition that this is what I want to do or this is who I want to be. There's nothing like that. You know, we were, we were wrongly taught those days. Who do you want to become in future? And a young child who was not taught anything. All he knows is, good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. That's all he knows. He said, I want to be a doctor. How many of you wanted to be doctors? Raise your hand. Don't do like this now. How many of you? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you are doctors? That's because what we thought was purpose was ambition. You don't discover yourself until you discover God. It is the God you discover that reveals the potentials that are in you. It is the God you discover that reveals who you are. It is the God you discover that reveals what dimension of God your life was meant to express. Every great ministry begins from an encounter. And when I'm talking about ministry, I'm not talking about this. Ministry is not this. Ministry is the man and the work. Begins from an encounter. That's the reason why when he, when he was to send Moses to, as a deliverer, the first thing he told Moses was what? I am that I am. Because if you don't know me who is talking to you, you cannot represent me as a deliverer. Self-discovery. You need to know who you are. Dominion is not just something you can chant and no, 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 no. You are going to, you are going to, you are going to have control over a sphere of society. You are going to determine the trend. It starts from discovering who you are. And who you are is dependent on discovering who God is. Number three, development. Now that you have discovered who you are, you must develop what you have discovered of yourself. Self-development. In the church, in the kingdom, we call it discipleship. In the world, we call it human capital development. Can I tell you something? It is important to first develop the skills needed to manage a business before starting the business. Otherwise, you will learn after failing what is needed to manage the business. Did you hear what I said? So just because you can cook does not mean your restaurant will sell. Yes, you have discovered that you are a chef. But you need to develop what you have discovered. You need to invest on yourself. My, I, I pray, I pray for every one of us here. That God will give us the resilient spirit. The zeal for personal development. The zeal to want to experience superior versions of yourself. How can you remain in one spot for three years as a believer? How? 
believers are investing more on buying phones than investing in their mind somebody told me apostle won't you change your phone i said i lie till the pack i won't change it but i will keep changing the knowledge in my mind every day because we have been we have, we have been fooled to think that the things we have define us many people try to build a reputation by what they acquire the bible says riches have wings it can fly if who you are is based on what you have acquired physically then you don't know who you are how much do you invest in yourself even the anointing you invest in developing it there are different levels of the anointing for different levels of results these were guys that just came back from a crusade they went to preach the bible says they told jesus even the demons were subject to us in your name yet when there was somebody to cast out the demon from they asked jesus why couldn't we cast it out i thought they just casted out demons that was because they only received power from jesus they did not receive knowledge to develop what they had received so when they faced another kind they didn't know it was another kind develop yourself develop your spiritual life develop your mind build your mind your worth and your value is based on the value and the worth of your mind the content of your mind look at africa today africa is the most blessed yet the most corrupt and poverty stricken continent we have all the natural resources yet we are the ones looking for aid more you know why because human capital is not developed people go to school but they are not educated what they teach us in school are obsolete theoretical things things that can no longer solve the problems of, of this day the equation they are giving you was the equation that could solve the problem of 1965 now we are seeing real-time issues that's why you go to china you find young teenagers producing phones the phones you are using but in nigeria what's the young teenager thinking of yahoo remember we have to function in his likeness that's the road to dominion so you got to invest in yourself if you need to pray pray create a routine of let me tell you something if you know you have any kind of ministry or gifting in your life spiritually you build a prayer life because there are situations that will not give you time to pray the one of the first reasons for building a prayer life is to activate a zone in your life where you can hear God per second, per second. What will happen when politicians in your state come to you? Or there's a problem in your company and you are just there, you can't solve it. Because all you know about prayer is just to speak in tongues. But do you know that whilst you speak in tongues, you can touch a dimension of knowledge you can tap into a frequency of creativity supernaturally and download solutions that solves life problems. It's development that does it. Development. When you see me here quoting scriptures anyhow, you see, if I to shock you to know that I've not, I've not read my Bible today. I'm sorry to say that. When I go back, I will do, I mean the normal reading I do. The one I did was just to bring bring about the message or i was meditating on some things but the normal bible reading i have not read today but i have developed a bible study life over time over the years some of you say the bible is too boring to read that's the reason why you don't have the word in your heart this thing i've been reading for more than 10 years every day so the scriptures i see them like pages in my mind god can speak to me while i'm in a plane and in, an, in less than an hour a message is formed I don't need a Bible to be there. Thy word have I hidden in my heart. This is what development does. When God spends time working on you in the place of process, He's building something inside of you that will help you become productive. Look at the man producing car, innocent. Isn't it? How did he start? He started by importing the parts of tricycles, motorcycles. He will import the parts. And when he comes to Nigeria, he will assemble it and sell. And his own was cheaper. Because when you import a full motorcycle, there is import duty on it, you will pay. But if you import it in parts, you will not pay import duty. 
That's why cars are expensive. Because of the import duty, the tax you pay on importing it. When he saw that that was successful, he started assembling and dissembling car parts. Then he went a step further. This is still self-development here. He went a step further. He started importing the car parts. When they come to Nigeria, they will assemble them in his plant. Then he said, no, I think we can do more. They started producing the parts. Because over time, they studied the parts that they imported. And they said, no, we can do this here. But the reason why poverty is disgracing the body of Christ now is because we don't have people that want to embrace self-development. You are a lecturer and all you know is what you, is your field of study. You are still depending on that government salary. Why can't you learn something? Learn a trade. Learn a business online. Explore your mind. Develop yourself. Some degrees you go for is not just to add certificates. It's to add knowledge. Somebody shout development. I pray that God will give us the heart to embrace personal development in the name of Jesus. Number four, deployment, productivity and impact. Deployment. Number one, divinity, the knowledge of God. Number two, discovery, the knowledge and awareness of who you are. Number three, development, refining your potentials and cultivating your skills in preparation for impact number four deployment this is now the stage of productivity and impact you have discovered who god is you have discovered who you are you have developed what you've discovered of yourself this is a time where you can produce result this is a time where you can generate impact naturally stresslessly footballers are highly paid that's because of how much labor they do in the secrets It is easy for them to make impact. Any man you see making impact is a product of years of development. And it is your impact that the world is looking for. Your impact is the key to identifying your place in society. Your impact. It is through your impact that your world will look for you. If I mention the name of any popular person in this world now, you will tie them to one impact they have made in society. You, what have you made? A woman is waiting for someone who has money to get married to. She doesn't want to marry the one that is still coming up. So that she can discover, help work with him and then bring about the wealth and all of that. Say, no, it must be, it must be well due. So that you will come and eat. Can I tell you something? If you are part of what you did not help to discover and develop, you are a devourer to that thing. You are a parasite to that thing. No matter how you try. That's just the truth. You, if you never work for a hundred thousand, you will never appreciate its value if it is given to you. And I, I, I guarantee you nine out of ten times, you will not know how you spent it. Have you heard people say, I don't know how they spend my salary. They've not understood the value of money. They are any money, but they don't understand the value. That's why you don't want to start a business and fail. You are afraid, afraid of failing. It is in failure you first discover the value of money. So the next time you cross your teeth and dot your eyes so you don't fail again. But because you have a senator in Abuja, an uncle, who sends you the money, that's why. God is taking us from a generation of li liabilities to a generation of impact producers, proof producers, in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray? It is after you have experienced divinity, discovery, development, and deployment that you can now enter dominion. The Bible says, be fruitful. Be fruitful. That is the image. So as long as you have discovered that you came from God, that's why we started from that scripture. He that is from above. When you have discovered that you are from God, then you know it is natural for you to be fruitful. Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. He said, you shall be blessed. You and your livestock, none shall be barren. Be fruitful. But the remaining ones, is not, you will not just be it. It's not your nature. You have to develop it. Multiply. Multiply.
replenish all of these are now your responsibility when you are able to multiply what you produce when you are able to replenish in other words create it in such a way that it can go round subdue the society make them bow to your product there are many people selling kose but there's something about your own that is different from everybody's own when you have achieved all of this dominion becomes inevitable that is the reason why there are so many in this earth till they leave this earth nobody can replace them my prayer is that before someone like daddy adeboe dies that god will raise at least one man that can carry the kind of faith and grace that man has men like bishop david oyedepo men like apostle johnson suleiman even in the business world the dangotes and the ote dollars but the problem is now they are giving back to a generation that is almost irresponsible dominion starts with a mindset but tonight god is shifting our mindsets are you ready to pray stand on your feet as you stand on your feet you have left on your seat every inferior and mediocre mindset yeah i'm prophesying to you the you that just stood up now is different from the you that was sitting the bible says god who commanded light to shine out of darkness darkness has fallen from somebody's life today but listen to me before we pray we must take responsibility are you ready jesus said i must walk the walk of him he agreed that it is work but people don't want work yet they want to be in ministry are you kidding me in fact ministry is the, is the work of all works let me just tell you go and rehearse somewhere before you enter i was to go see somebody recently and when they said when we set the appointment and all of that i discovered i didn't have a word for the person so you know what no sleeping one hour one hour pass two hours but i'm not praying to be charged i'm praying till that those charges are able to draw revelation from another realm for this person to believe me i need to tell him something that nobody told me and i kept praying like that praying like that praying like that till my eyes closed i don't know how many hours my eyes closed in the early hours of the morning and i had a vision and i saw his three children i'd never seen him before i saw his three children i said okay it's, it's, it's all right took my bath they came and carried me to his house when we got there and sat down i said do you have three children i said yes one boy two girls say yes all of them are light skin say yes then i started prophesying i said this one there's nothing i tell that person in the name of god that he will not believe but what is working there is not just the anointing there's skill involved many of you sit under prophetic ministries that you that that are so you know they are, they are a blessing they can reveal things but do you know the practice it has taken the prophet to master the art of decoding things from the realm of the spirit and revealing them to you the first prayer we are going to cry today is lord grant me the zeal oh first of all let's even pray and ask him to give us a revelation of him that will help us discover who we are because many of us are living another person's destiny many of you what you are doing now is what somebody said that's why you are always looking for confirmation 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 you've not known god enough for yourself you have not heard god enough you are always looking for confirmation till the day is confusion that they will give to you so we need to pray first of all lord give me a revelation of you in this season that will help me discover who i am in you lift your voice and pray after all this preaching you are praying like this Come on, we can pray later. You need to cry and say, Lord, give me a burning bush experience. Give me a burning bush experience. Like Moses. 
I want to know you. Because in knowing you is knowing who I am. In knowing you is knowing who I was created to be. In this season, open me to a revelation of you. That light that shone in the darkness. Let it shine in my mind. Let it shine in my heart. You reign forever. Your name is everlasting. You are the wisdom divine. You reign forever. Your name is everlasting. You are the wisdom divine. I need to know you again. I need a revelation of God again. Take me to my Sinai. Take me to my home. Another dimension of the revelation of you. I have known you as El Shaddai. I have known you as Shaddai. I want to know you as I am. Jesus the next prayer is to receive the zeal and the fire for personal development. Remember, one of, one of the elements of the dominion mindset is what? Resilience. Responsibility. Developing what God has given to you. Remember the parable of the talent. The one he gave five to another two to another one. And when he came back, the one with five talents said, I traded with the five. And I've discovered, I've gotten five others. You must trade with what God has given you. Your skill, your knowledge, your competence, your certificate, your anointing, your grace. Can you lift your voice and say, Lord, I receive the zeal, the fire, the grace to stay and develop what you have put inside of me. Develop every passion. Develop every skill. Develop every knowledge. Every idea. Every grace that you have put inside of me. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, for the grace that I receive was not in vain. He said, for I labor more than they are. The grace to labor, the grace to study, the grace to pray, the grace to fast, the grace to read. The grace for capacity development. This is not the best of you. This is not the best of your version. There are superior versions of yourself that your world is waiting for. There are greater dimensions of yourself that your world seeks to be revealed. The grace to stay, the passion to develop myself, the resilience. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Friends, there is more. There is more. You can be more than mountain. You can be more in power. But there is a price to pay. There is a price of personal development. There is a price of alignment. Jesus. Two more prayers and we are done. In Esther chapter 4, when Mordecai heard about the plot of Haman to assassinate all the Jews, the Bible says Mordecai was in sackcloth and in mourning. 
and he sent a message to Esther. He said, who would have known that you were brought into the kingdom for such a time as this? There is a reason for why God has deployed you in that organization. There is a reason for why God has deployed you in that local assembly. There is a reason for why you are in that choir. All of them are serious. There is a reason for why you are there. Your deployment is tied to your productivity and impact. Can you lift your voice and say, Lord, make me an agent of transformation. Make me an agent. Not a liability, but an asset to society, an agent of transformation, of productivity, of relevance. Make me relevant to my world. Make me relevant to my environment, to my sphere, to society. There is a reason for why you were born in this time. You are the believer. Your generation is waiting for. You are the savior. Your nation is waiting for. In Jesus name we pray finally we are going to cry to God position me in the field or the place of my assignment are you hearing the prayers here? We are going to cry to him. Listen, you will not function everywhere. You will not produce results everywhere. Some of you are in the wrong places. Some of you are displaced. The Bible says in Luke chapter 3 from verse 3, 4 down. It said John the Baptist was in the wilderness. And the word of the Lord came to John the Baptist in the wilderness. Luke chapter 3 verse 3 and 4 and the Bible says there went out to him all of Judea and Israel he found his place in Luke chapter 4 from verse 16 17 and 18 Jesus entered the, the synagogue as his custom was and the scroll of Isaiah was given to him and he found the place where it was written he found his place you are going to cry and say, Lord, help me to find my place. Deploy me in the place of my assignment. Help me to find my place. Deploy me in the place of my relevance. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I want you to lift your voice and pray. It is time for the church to arise. It is time for an awakening. Saviors shall arise from Mount Zion and church the Mount of Israel. Saviors shall arise. It is your time. It is your season. The Lord is waiting for you. Come on, somebody cry. Somebody pray, say, Lord, help me to find my place. Tonight, I want to prophetically speak over your lives. You heard the testimony of the doctor. She said the creative dimension of the prophetic. Something is about to be created in your life. 
and anything that does not look like God will be taken away from your life some of you by this word that is coming forth you will be taken from where you are and placed where you ought to be please where's pastor david john please come i'm going to just speak over you briefly then i will give him i want him to speak over the lives and destinies of those who are called into the marketplace all right now this is my beloved friend and brother we've known for years i can tell you he's anointed in fact so anointed i thought that after after the university it would be ministry but god took him and placed him in the, the oil sector there is a grace to stay in that kind of system and be relevant there is a grace to stay in that kind of system and not be corrupted jesus prayed for the disciples say i pray that you will not take them out of the world but that you keep them in the in the from the evil thereof please lift your hands I, I want you to open your heart to receive i will give him to just speak generally release the grace for wisdom and every other grace and then after that i will round it up please lift your hands and i want you to shout amen for every word coming your life is about to change just bring the spirit pray in tongues pray in tongues pray violently we've started already just continue in that atmosphere lekete pakata pakato lekete kete lekato koto lekata pekete ke repoko sakata palani on the fire of god the counsel of god the might of god jete kata pakato lekata pekete biato repa shende kata bila kande kata bela diatas ele pepe de ke se preke cheke de be bila tusa for in jesus mighty name we have prayed Before I do what I'm going to do I want to celebrate the man of God. You don't need to clap please. I want to honor you sir for this great privilege. It's not taken lightly by me. Hallelujah. It's an honor to stand before anointed men and women of God. While in school, yes, I thought maybe it's going to be ministry. In fact, where I work today sir, they used to tell me as a small child. And I, when I see an MPC on TV, I used to shout. But today 20 something years after man of God I'm a senior staff see there is a place that you may not know where God is taking you to it may be a detour portion for you to pass through before a higher glory I want you to think every step God is carrying you through as a means to an end hallelujah all your times of prayer study being a worker in God's house amen don't take it for granted I was in the university this morning and I had to pray over the people there I told them something. I say you are going through a process. Hallelujah. Where God is taking you to is beyond where you can imagine. See, I am so convinced. When I was asked, see, that was not the first place I was. Where I started working, sir. I was going for a conference as I arrived. The spirit of God said call my former boss where I was doing IT. As I called me, say where are you? I say I'm in Abuja, I'm serving. He said meet me tomorrow by 7. I quickly rushed enter Lagos in the night went for the interview. They gave me a day to resume at Julius Beggar. I say I am still serving. I will resume when I want to resume. Amen. And I resume God told me. He said you will not spend 2 years where you are. I say God are you calling me to ministry? Will they sack me? <laughs> will project finish? Man of God, when I resume in my place of work, it was 3 days left to complete 2 years. God said you will not spend 2 years. Just 3 days to complete 2 years. You can check my records. I pray over you in the name of Jesus. You will not miss your place. I pray over you in the name of Jesus in conjunction with the grace of God in this commission. Whatever you have cried about, God will change it for a testimony in the name of Jesus. Your seed will not go without favor. Your cry will not go without reward. Your prayers will be lifted up as vials as incense unto God and the answers will come speedily in the name of Jesus. Your prayer life will not suffer. When they see you they see grace. When they see you they see the mighty hand of God. When they see you they see the wisdom the counsel of God at work in the mighty name of Jesus. Even in the marketplace you are preserved. Even in the marketplace where the enemy has dug a pit for you you will not fall 
in the name of Jesus. Before things happen, God shows you in the name of Jesus. You are ten steps ahead of your enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. My former place of work, there were things I did. It was based on the instruction of the Holy Ghost. Things that should have put me in trouble. Amen. The Spirit of God just said, go and inspect what they are doing. And I will catch them on the spot. There were times that they came with heavy vehicles to come and give me. So I said, I'm paid salary. When I want to collect, I will let you know. It's not because it's by power. My power. Zechariah 4, 6, the Bible says, it's not by power, nor by might, by, 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 by my spirit, said the Lord God. The spirit of God will preserve you. You want to go into lecturing. You want to go into business. God will preserve you. In the name of Jesus. When you speak, they will not even remember that you have a secular job. They will think that all you are doing is ministry because you, you have the fullness of God manifesting in and out. When you are sleeping, when you are awake, when you are conscious of it, when you are not conscious of it. Apostle said something. Let me just recall. He said, you wake him any time. Any day, any time. He will manifest. I went to see my parents in Abuja. As the boat car was at the gate, I was here, you know, my father is a pastor. I was here scream of somebody that they were delivering. My father was praying for someone and the person was manifesting. I said, me, I'll do usher work today as I enter this house. I just went to speak with my mom and I greeted. What happened? I now had my father call me in the sitting room. He said, David, I just knew that, yes, time for usher, usher work has come. Do you know, he said, I will hand over this person to you. I said, ah, I'm just coming now, I'm hungry. I didn't even eat all those snacks in the plane. Do you know, as I appeared in the living room, if I laugh, that person will shout. I was just laughing. And the person will say, why did you come here? I said, did I come to look for you? Did I even know I'll meet you? I don't know you from anywhere. The person started shouting, manifesting. The more I laughed, the more the person's shout. You can't even look into my eyes at that point in time. I did not even look at the person. I just knelt down. I just started laughing with my father. He was, we were just laughing. Then I just said, Father, we are covered in the blood of Jesus and this person is free in Jesus' name. That was it. See, the consciousness of God increases in you in the name of Jesus. I pray, I decree, and I prophesy that all that you have been taught today will not leave your spirit in the name of Jesus. They will be cemented in the name of Jesus. Just wave your hands and say, be glorified. Father, be glorified. Father, be exalted. Can we celebrate God for him? Thank you, sir. Yeah. I think we, he requested for prayers, but maybe we'll do it in BPI tomorrow. Uh, maybe we'll do it in BPI. Thank you. Please celebrate God for him once more. Lift your hands, please. Every mindset of mediocrity every mindset of feeling incapable every spirit of obscurity that has controlled your existence before now some of you inherited it from your lineage some of you came from your background by the power that rose jesus from the dead it falls off your mind forever it falls off your mind forever Micah said, I am full of power as by the Spirit of God. I declare upon you, the Spirit of God rests upon you. The Spirit of knowledge, the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of supernatural creativity, the Spirit of inventions. Receive that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every force that has fought your rising. Every force that has fought your capacity to produce. And to reproduce. By the power in the name of Jesus. That force is broken forever. It is broken forever. It is broken forever. I declare that you will multiply. You will replenish the earth. You will produce results. 
in your sphere of influence in the field that God has called you to those of you that are called into ministry as you lift your hands up I declare the grace that causes men to manifest rest upon you now every grace and every gifting that is inside of you the power to manifest receive it now receive it now from today no to failure no to failure success becomes your inheritance success becomes your your, your manifestation and those of you that are in a place and you are trusting God to take you to where he wants you to be by the power of the word that has come for today and by the mandate of the prophetic I declare that you are shifting to the place of your divine assignment you are shifting to the place of your destiny be relocated from that job from that business from that state wherever you are step into the place that God has ordained for you let the wind of the Holy Ghost blow you from where you are and position you where you ought to be in the name of Jesus Christ you are empowered to prosper you are empowered to succeed you are empowered to walk in dominion you will live as one that is from above and you will live above all from today I place you by the power of the anointing above limitations above circumstances above situations above everything that seeks to impede your advancement in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you praise wave your hands and bless the Lord you are worthy to be praised we thank you for what you have done wave your hands and magnify him blessed be your name in Jesus